Moving to America in the time from Zax's death in 1894 through to the 1920s, there was very little, little classical saxophone development. One woman, Elise Hall, made, took up the saxophone as an amateur initially to improve her medical condition of arthritis. After falling in love with the instrument, she decided to take it upon herself to seek composers to compose music for the classical saxophone. She was a member of the Boston Orchestral Society, and so performing her works to these people, even as an amateur, was a very important step as it allowed important musicians in American society to hear the saxophone and its potential. She commissioned over 20 works for the saxophone and orchestra. Perhaps the most important was her work that she commissioned by Debussy, Rhapsody, for saxophone and concerto in 1903. Apart from the classical genre in America, the saxophone seemed to be taken off more as an amateur instrument for novel entertainment. After World War I, audiences were seeking post-war entertainment and the saxophone seemed to fill this gap. In the 1910s, the Six Brown Brothers formed as a vaudeville act. These brothers were originally trained as circus clowns and circus musicians, but decided to incorporate the saxophone into their routine after hearing its possibilities. They performed in vaudeville dressed in clown costumes, five of them as clowns and one as the black character that was popular in vaudeville at this time. Throughout the 1910s, they performed in vaudeville short comedic sketches that would also include a performance on the saxophones. Each brother would play a different saxophone, ranging from the alto to the bass saxophone. Their music was in the rag style, was comedic, and often accompanied the story that had taken place in the vaudeville act. In the late tens and the early twenties, they began to make recordings, and I would like to play for you some of the recordings of the Six Brown Brothers. <laughs> Another musician who helped to popularize the saxophone at this time was Rudy Vidoft. Rudy Vidoft played the C melody saxophone that isn't used so much today, but was very popular at the time. 
He played in a ragtime waltz style and displayed many extended techniques on the saxophone that entertained audiences at the time. These techniques included fast versatile tonguing, portimenti between notes, extreme vibrato, and a technique that he called the laugh. I'd like to show you some of these techniques on this short promotional video that features Rudy Vidoff playing his piece, Saxophone. <laughs> The popularity of these two groups coincided with the developments in the recording industry so that for the first time audiences were able to hear music in their own home outside of the concert hall. There is no doubt that the recording industry contributed, contributed to the popularity, popularity of these groups and as a result the saxophone became popular in homes as an amateur instrument. From 1915 through to 1929 a million saxophones were sold in America. This age has been known as the golden age of saxophone in America and is arguably one of the reasons why the saxophone was led to be incorporated in the jazz style. As the saxophone gained popularity, many musicians became aware of its potential and experimented using the saxophone in the larger ensemble. In 1872, the French Guard Republican Band that I mentioned earlier came to perform in America for the first time. After hearing the ensemble, band leaders recognized the possibilities of including a saxophone in their ensemble. And in 1873, Patrick Gilmore included saxophones in his New York City Regiment Band. In 1884, the popular Sousa Band also incorporated a saxophone section. The possibilities of the saxophone in the larger ensemble heard in these early military bands alongside the popularity of the Six Brown Brothers and Rudy Vidoff encouraged jazz band and jazz dance leaders to incorporate the saxophone into their sound. In the 1920s, Paul Whiteman decided to include a saxophone section into his band. He developed a style known as symphonic jazz and is heard on George Gershwin's performance of A Rhapsody in Blue. Later in the 1930s, with the popularity of the swing band and the dance band, band leaders such as Duke Ellington, Fletcher Henderson and Count Basie decided to include a saxophone section into their ensemble. In 1933, in the Fletcher Henderson band, we see for the first time a five-man saxophone section of two altos, two tenors and a baritone. For the first time, and this is where the saxophone's home in jazz was solidified. From this point on, many soloists emerged from the swing band setting.